Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sun today, the 7th of September 2011. We've had an X2.1 flare in the last 24 hours. That came as rather a surprise to me, and we'll see the reason for that in a minute. But first, our trivia question, which is going to be very easy today. How much brighter is an X2.1 flare than a C1 flare? The answer will be given at the end. Since the last time we met, we've had just three C flares, but one X flare, a 2.1. That came from region 1283. However, here I would like you to focus on the shape of the X flare. It looks as though it initially has a very slow rise, then a very sharp peak, and then a very slow decay. I believe that this is just two flares going on simultaneously, one long duration event and the X flare, which is very impulsive. We'll take a look at the relevant coronal data later to see whether this is indeed the case. Noah claims that there are six numbered regions on the disk at the moment, but I can't see them. Region 1277 is behind the west limb, even by Noah's estimates, and Region 1288, the small region in the northeast, uh, has disappeared overnight and is actually listed as zero sunspot area. So I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Anyway, I see four numbered sunspot regions on the disk, and they're listed here. Region 1281, which is down in the southwest, is rapidly going over the west limb, and its area has dropped by 80% overnight, so it's decaying quite considerably. There's, but there's a small and unnumbered region to its north and east. Region 1283, the one that produced the flare, has actually dropped in its area by about 10%. If you look at the detailed pictures closely, you can see that the satellite spots, both leading and trailing the major part of the region, have decayed quite a bit over the last 24 hours. However, there's been a lot of development in the center part of the region where the main spots are. If you look at a detailed picture of the magnetogram, you can see we have some strong positive polarity impinging upon a strong negative polarity area. In fact, they're moving with respect to each other. And in fact, what we have here is two sunspot regions colliding. Such collisions build up stress in the magnetic field and provide the energy to produce large flares. Region 1287 in the southeast has actually increased its area by about 25% overnight. Although I can't see a great deal of difference in the region from yesterday, so I think a lot of that growth in area is due to a uh, reduction in foreshortening as it rotates further onto the disk. The new region in the northeast, region 1289, is rotated more onto the disk, and we can see its structure somewhat better now, but it's still too foreshortened to tell whether it's growing or decaying. However, we can see that it is a large leader spot surrounded by a few small satellite spots and a large area of plage. This implies it's a mature region, so unless it shows some new growth, I doubt that this region will contribute very much to increased solar activity over the next few days. So despite the X-flare, I think the decrease in the number and the size of the sunspot regions indicate that solar activity will probably decrease over the next few days. Now let's try to pull all this together by looking at the continuous evolution of these regions over the last 48 hours using the sunspot and magnetic movies from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory. Here I think the most profitable area to look at is region 1283 near the disk center and look at the formation and merging of those two regions that I talked about earlier. Next we can take a look at what's going on higher up in the solar atmosphere by looking at the transition region and coronal movies from the AIA instrument. Again here particularly focusing on region 1283. The first movie is from the transition region at about 50,000 degrees. The second is from the low temperature corona at about 600,000 degrees. And the last one is the high temperature corona at about 10 million degrees. Last we have this beautiful movie from spaceweather.com that shows a combination of temperatures all at once. And the, the top there is the X-ray light curve to show you where you are during the flare. But what about my uh, hypothesis about the two flares? Well, let's take a look at the uh, corona from a different angle using the stereo ahead data. And I'm going to show three repeats of the last 24 hours of coronal emission. You can see towards the end of the sequence that there is an explosion on the east limb of the uh, image which is about sun center for us. That's the X2 flare. However, if you look at this center which is behind our east limb, you can see there's another event going on just about at the same time. We can confirm this using the coronagraph data from SOHO. If my hypothesis is correct, we would expect a strong CME off of the west limb. And indeed, when you look at the movies, you can see that that is the case. But the question I'm being most often asked is, is the X-flare directing a coronal mass ejection towards the Earth? Well, we, again, we need a different perspective. And again, I'll go to the uh, stereo ahead data, but this time use the coronagraph from that instrument. 
and we'll use it to see whether there's a coronal mass ejection at all, and if so, which way is it going. From these movies we can see that indeed the X-ray did produce a coronal mass ejection, but it's heading fairly far north, so most likely we're going to get brushed by the edge of it at, at worst. The A stated tells us about the solar wind. Solar wind temperature hasn't changed very much in the last 24 hours. However, the velocity seems to have reduced somewhat, and the density is almost at zero. Uh, so uh, there's hardly any solar wind out there at the moment. The high energy electron flux seems to have increased, and we have a second proton event underway. The first was from the M flare yesterday, and the second is from the X flare. The auroral zone looks less agitated than it did yesterday, but the KP index has been varying just between 1 and 3. So in summary then, the X-ray background has dropped to the B4 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 93, radio sun intensity is at 112 solar flux units, solar wind speed is at 410 kilometers per second with a density very close to zero, and geospace conditions are considered quiet. My forecast then for the next 24 hours is that C flares are likely, M flares and X flares are possible, the sunspot number will probably drift lower, we would likely get more coronal mass ejections, the solar wind speed should drop lower, and the geomagnetic storm is possible. From the composite coronal image we can see that there are no new regions due over the East Limb for another three or four days. So the answer to our trivia question of how many times brighter is an X 2.1 flare than a C1 flare is 210 times brighter. Each flare classification, B, C, M and X, are separated by an order of magnitude. So an X1 flare is 100 times brighter than a C1 flare. You then just multiply by the number leading. So 2.1 times 100 is 210. I told you it was easy. So that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.